Hello. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Can barely see anyone, but very pleased uh, to have you all here on a fascinating uh, topic, or at least to me, real world assets. Real world assets, why are they fascinating? Because they're the bridge between blockchain and real world application. And in this case, we're going to do a deep dive into one concrete uh, uh, use case, which is environmental action and how real world assets can drive further environmental action through integrity. So let's start with a fact. Uh, I think you guys all know it, but let's say it again. We are facing an environmental emergency on two fronts, which is driving both like a climate emergency uh, and also a biodiversity loss. So if ethical reasons don't drive you that much, let's look at the business uh, impact, which is huge as well on both fronts. Uh, biodiversity, 55% uh, uh, of the global GDP right now depends on biodiversity and, and, and as much on climate. So good news is that Europe is driving uh, action and quite seriously. Uh, uh, they've announced and they've committed to climate neutrality by 2050. More so than just committing it, they're putting laws into place. They're putting laws in forward. And so two major ones are CSRD, which is financial uh, dis disclosure on all the activities which are non-financial, plus uh, CBAM, which is the Carbon Border Agreement Mechanism. So by doing so, they're not only obligating European companies to move toward net zero, but also affecting uh, worldwide companies. So with you know, the emergency that we are facing and the, those laws that are coming into place, this is the rise, this is the birth of what we can call a giant market. Uh, one, one, someone that I guess like the majority of the people uh, in the room know, uh, Larry Fink, said uh, quite clear and simply, every company and every industry will be transformed by the transition to a net zero world. So that's a bold statement and saying like, you know, the only question is, do you want to lead or be led? So that's, that's roughly his point. Now, of course, you can say this is just a statement. If we look at facts, uh, actually there is no mistaking. Indeed, it's going to be a huge market. When we see net zero commitments, they all doubled since 2021 up to 2023, whether it to be nationwide, state-wise, city-wise, or company-wise. More interestingly, uh, even more interesting, this is the first time in history that green bounds have surpassed uh, oil bounds. So we're definitely in something that is becoming uh, very big. If we look at like the market of nature-based solutions, i.e. environmental funding, um, we can see that actually today it's already reaching 154 billion dollars, doubling by 2025, tripling by uh, 2030, and reaching up to one trillion dollars in 2050, according to plenty of forecasts. So this is just this is already a big market, but becoming a huge market. All uh, forecasting agencies, you know, McKinsey, Bloomberg, etc., have the same uh, conclusion. Yes, it's going to grow both in terms of prices and demand. So you might say, OK, cool, awesome. There is a, a climate emergency. There is a market into place that is booming that will help solve part of this uh, issue. True, but the, the reality is that there are two major problems that are currently you know, just too important for the market to reach its full potential. And so those two major problems, I think one of them, everyone can relate to it, is a huge lack of trust, like a massive lack of trust in this market, which is basically we can call like greenwashing exposition, exposure. Uh, you know, business environmental efforts, when you put in the internet like uh, company environmental effort, the first word that comes to play are greenwashing. License to pollute, worthless, bullshit, etc. What is the core of the issue here? It's transparency, it's traceability. Companies are stating things, but they have nowhere to actually like showcase what they indeed did. Um, and, and so it creates a, 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 you know, a lack of trust, which is uh, generating inertia in the action.
So that's the number one. Number two is at least as important, is a big complexity creating a market which is illiquid. So the majority of the deals that happen on the environmental restoration front are over a phone call, a WhatsApp, old school type of paper that you sign uh, across the world. This is a map that you see with all the carbon removal actors right now in the market. Not only you can see how many there are, you can also see how many blocks or typologies of actors there are. And so what does it create is a segmentation, a fragmentation which is too big with all those players using databases which are private, i.e. not interoperable, creating this, again, lack of transparency and traceability. So big trust issue, big complexity creating illiquid market. Here comes Carbonable. You saw me coming, I guess, stating those two big problems. Carbonable, we're the copilot to make carbon removal both actionable and verifiable. That's our mission, that's our vision, and that's what we do to get there. To make it simple, we have two core uh, aspects, two core value proposition. The first one is simplify complexity. As we said, complexity is one of the big problems in this market, so we're simplifying it and we're streamlining action, providing the tools for anyone, any company or any user or any individual to take action. Number two, providing data integrity, i.e. reinforcing the trust in this market. Any action, any data that goes through Carbonable can be proven. Can be proven through StartNet and our technology that has been actually accredited deep tech by the Bank of Innovation of Europe. So quite a big accomplishment that we are uh, pretty proud of. On the make it easy, Concretely, what it means is like we've built several tools that are accessible either by individuals or companies, B2Bs, companies including like giants like Orange, Orange in France, or, or, or Pierre Favre, or, or why not, and also individuals who have a, a quite, quite a big community that is acting on this. Different uh, products, different applications that facilitate uh, the action uh, for those users. So we help funding, we help managing a portfolio, we help planning the type of uh, uh, assets that we want, uh, asset allocation that we want. Uh, we help uh, reporting all those through tooling. All of this, all of those tools are built on a foundation, technological layer, that is an open source, decentralized infrastructure. So we've decided it to be open source and decentralized for one reason, generating trust, being transparent, being accessible, being traceable. What we have done is creating this infrastructure which is interoperable and that can actually capture the data and uh, make it transparent and traceable for anyone through the entire life cycle of a carbon removal project or a nature restoration project. So from the project design up to the account accountability, i.e. the usage of the assets, through the certification, the funding, the verification, etc., we can use our technology to capture the data and make it, you know, uh, just uh, uh, greenwashing free. I.e., you you cannot be uh, accused of greenwashing when using this technology by the sense that you're doing things right and you're proving it. So we are creating, in short, this layer of trust so needed in this market. So. You could say, okay, application is great, uh, the underlying uh, uh, you know, um, foundation is also uh, very interesting. Now, what is the relationship with real world assets? Well, here it comes. Our bedrock, both on the product side and both on the technological side, is semi-fungible real world assets. Why so? The first answer is because Nature by design, carbon removal assets by design, by nature, are semi-fungible. Let me explain. One carbon removal asset is equal to one ton of CO2 that has been either removed or avoided uh, to be sent in the atmosphere. So that's simple, and you might say, okay, so it's fungible. Any carbon credit is one ton avoided or, 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 or removed. True. 
but non-fungible at all because one carbon removal asset in a mangrove project uh, in Asia has nothing to do with a carbon removal asset that comes from a capture, a technological uh, direct air capture uh, in uh, Iceland, for example. Completely different metadata, dif completely different prices, completely different everything. When you look at the impact, so for example, metadata-wise, meta our real-world assets have over 30 uh, data points. To give a few examples, uh, the localization, where it is in the world, uh, who is the project developer behind, uh, what, type of, what type of geo project it is, nature-based, technology-based, removal or avoidance, etc. Uh, which standard is certifying this carbon credit, etc. All those are uh, elements that define a carbon removal asset and that define its value. So that's why we went with the semi-fungible uh, real-world assets and we've actually introduced one new ERC in StarkNet for, for so, to do so. And why are those semi-fungible real-world assets absolutely a uh, game changer in this industry? Because if you think it through, it addresses both concerns. Number one, integrity. And second, liquidity. It's really like integrity meeting liquidity. Integrity, why? Because as I said, the real-world assets capture all the essence of the metadata that define a carbon removal asset. So through carbonable real-world assets, you have all the information you need about like, those, uh, those uh, uh, carbon removal assets. So authenticity is guaranteed. Transparency, traceability, you know it, I won't explain, is blockchain. And ownership, because we know and we can track all like during the entire lifetime of those assets, who owned it, who sold it, when, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So integrity is guaranteed. Liquidity, you could tell, okay, but if there's semi-fungible, then it will create just a bunch of small uh, deals, OTC. Well, we are breaking it with uh, you know composability and decomposability. The idea is like one asset. If we if we go back here, is defined by all those type of metadata it means that we can create pools. We can create pools of you know, all projects located in South America, all projects located in Asia, all projects located in Europe. We could create also pools with standards, certifiers, with typology of projects. Is it mangrove, etc.? By doing so, you create liquidity. Accessibility as well, because we empower anyone. And when I mean anyone, is literally anyone. There is no minimum in our protocol to fund nature. So anyone can contribute. And interoperability, of course, meaning that all those real-world assets in our technology can be plugged to any other third-party applications. So that's really like how real-world assets, in this concrete example, is solving two of the major problems in this market. Integrity, so trust, and liquidity, uh, accessibility to all, and, and, and tradability of those assets. So, Happy, actually, after the talk to answer any of your questions. So if you have questions, please uh, keep them in mind. That was the brief presentation about Carbonable and why real-world assets are a game changer in this industry. Now, let's move towards uh, uh, another one, which is like I'm super excited, doing a couple of announcements uh, today that involves the StartNet community and, and, and potentially all of you guys. Um, so. First and foremost, uh, please uh, make a, a round of applause for StartNet, who committed actually to uh, counterbalance all the emissions of this event through provable carbon removal. This event has been counterbalanced, and they've uh, funded, co-funded uh, a mangrove restoration project uh, through Carbonable. So please give a round of applause for for StartNet. It's it's really like, uh, I have to say, beyond, beyond any like, business type of partnership or whatnot, it's just like, it, it's, uh, it's uh, very please, pleasing, let's say, to, to see that, uh, uh, you know, major actors are taking uh, uh, um, into account the fact that, indeed, like, we all have like, uh, emissions which are generating a bad impact on the environment, and they're, they're trying to do their best to reduce it on top of also counterbalancing it. So uh, again, congratulations, StarCat, and I'm sure this is just the beginning of a very long uh, partnership uh, with us. Now, second announcement, and I think this is uh, 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 even uh, 
<laughs> of greater importance to anyone here in the, in, the, in, the, in the room is that we are launching what we call the green chip campaign. Why green chip? Because everyone talks about blue chip projects and stuff. We want to be the green chip project of, uh, of, uh, of the StartNet ecosystem and ET ecosystem as a whole. So we're fostering nature regeneration. How do we do so? Well, uh, we are opening a project funding to anyone, to the community, but also to any core contributors and builders and protocols from the ecosystem of StartNet and Ethereum. As of today already, we have over 15 protocols uh, who committed to contribute to nature restoration, including StartNet, including ETCC, so a major uh, ET uh, uh, event uh, that will be uh, in Brussels this year. Argent, uh, Itamar, thank you. Uh, Avenue, uh, StartNet ID, Arc, uh, Pragma, uh, etc., etc. So very humbled and proud to have been able to actually gather all those actors to contribute positively to nature restoration. What is the core message behind is we as a blockchain ecosystem can do more uh, than just like uh, uh, non-tangible uh, elements that people barely understand outside of the blockchain world, let's say. We can generate collectively a very important and positive impact on our ecosystem. So what does that mean to fund nature, you might ask? Cool, so you've, you found nature restoration. In return, you get carbon assets. And those carbon assets, you have two ways to leverage them or to use them. The number one, you want to engage in the carbon market. So it's like, OK, I funded, carbon, uh, I funded a, a project that is going to generate carbon assets. Those carbon assets, please, Carbonable, resell them to uh, B2B partners. And that way, you, know, you get a margin on the uh, uh, carbon that uh, has been sold. So that's the number one, engaging in carbon markets. The second one is offsetting emissions. So instead of reselling them, you can use them, burn them for your own uh, offsetting purposes. So in, in any case, you're doing good for the planet. And so that's really like the, the mindset here is, OK, let's collectively restore nature. There are great opportunity behind. And, and it's just like a, 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 a has to, I guess, for pretty much everyone. Now, about the opportunity itself, this is, and I have no shame to say because I'm, I'm convinced 100% this is an AA uh, project, an AA opportunity. Uh, and, and we are not the, the only one saying so. There is an external rating agency that rated this project and, and, and the project developers passed projects to a AA rating. So it means like this is top 2% type of project of nature restoration. Why so? Extraordinary co-benefits. Uh, it's not only carbon capture because this is the default, let's say. It's also impact on biodiversity. It's also impact on uh, local livelihoods. It's also impact on, let's say, uh, food security, on um, the coastal uh, protection, all of this. So this is really like extraordinary uh, co-benefits. Also, it's a fairly low funding price. Why? Because we actually secured a co-financement from one of our B2B partners, uh, Pierre Fab, which is a big pharmaceutical uh, group. Uh, who co-funded this project and gives access uh, to this uh, project funding to anyone. And uh, last but not least, uh, uh, for any, let's say, B2C contributors, uh, it will generate boosting uh, in, in the leaderboard uh, points that you can get through the funding of this project. So mark this date. Uh, it's uh, March uh, 26, so in two weeks. Uh, the funding is open. There, there is already like a, a, a long uh, pre-registering list, uh, but but the goal is like really like to provide access to a maximum of people to be able to do good and get rewarded for it. So if you want to have more information about like the project itself, you simply have like to actually uh, uh, you know scan this uh, QR code. It will uh, get you to our uh, uh, web page, uh, like the DAP that we have. Uh, you will ha you will get to the page of this specific project. You will have a link to the uh, due diligence document that has been done. So detailing everything about the project, who runs it, uh, detailing also like the actual uh, rating of this uh, project. And, uh, and, and yes, don't forget to pre-register. There is a, you, you just have like to connect your wallet and then you can pre-register. Don't forget to do so because like the, the previous project that we've opened for B2C were sold out in, in, uh, in minutes uh, and, and actually even one in, in seconds. So. Uh, yeah, if, if you're keen, uh, 
I, we invite you to actually dig more, do your own research, and to uh, pre-register. We've created a bunch of tools to help you visualize how big of an opportunity that is for you and for the planet. Um, beyond the fact that I stated like several uh, you know, protocols and builders in the Web3 ecosystem are trusting us, uh, I want to highlight also some key partnerships that we have on the B2B front, including Orange, including Pierre including... Um, so we are trusted by off-chain users, by uh, off-chain company, on-chain companies. We are trusted by the supply, i.e. the project developers, the certifiers, and the demand, so the funders, from B2B to B2C. So not to brag, just to say, okay, we are, we are happy that you know, integrity is driving action and is driving positive feedback on our work. So that's, uh, that's about it for this presentation. Uh, provable nature restoration for all. This is what we want to convey. Only on StarkNet, built on StarkNet, uh, Starknet and proudly built on StarkNet. And uh, if you're keen to be part of this journey of restorating nature through integrity, well, here is the, the QR code that you can scan and or the Telegram, uh, my Telegram, if you want to reach out for any questions or partnerships that you would like to do moving forward. Thank you very much, everyone, for your attention. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Guillaume. Uh, thank you for this fantastic presentation. Uh, are you doing a QA or? Yeah, Q&A. Uh, if, you, if you guys have questions, I'm uh, more than happy to answer. Any questions from the public? Goes once, goes twice, and we have a few. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so we're specializing on the carbon removal. So on the net zero journey, you have three key steps. Number one is you do a carbon footprint. Number two is you reduce as much as you can your emissions. Number three is you remove what you cannot reduce. We're like, you're using a computer, you're using a light, you will have like a, a negative impact. And that you remove. We are focusing on the last part, which is removing. That said, we plug uh, other solutions into our... Uh, so for example, footprint, uh, uh, footprint products, or uh, what we're doing is like we, we capture the data from those uh, footprints calculation, integrate it into the platform. So we can say, okay, company X has done a current footprint through that methodology with those outcomes, and now is moving forward towards uh, uh, carbon removal. And, and the idea is really like we try to capture the entire value chain so that anything is, again, you can go back in time, track, prove any of those actions from A to Z. Exactly. Thank you very much, Guillaume, for uh, answering. Um, and again, a round of applause uh, for him. Uh, a fantastic presentation. Thank you very and, much. And uh, thank you for doing God's work uh, for off uh, offsetting um, carbon emission. Um, that's it. Perfect. So, Cool. Thank you Thank very you. much, guys. Bye.